Imagine having your $13.5 million violin stolen while playing on stage. What you are about to see is one of the greatest heists ever committed in classical music history. It all happened in this dressing room where the musician left his $13.5 million Stradivari for only 30 minutes as he would play on another instrument for the second part of his concert. And this was a horrible mistake. And before he knew it, this would be the last time he would ever see his violin. The NYPD scouted the area thoroughly and launched an investigation that would last for weeks without any trace of the violin. Make sure to listen to this story until the end because it has one of the greatest plot twists ever. And what makes this story so special is that it's probably one of the greatest heists in history. The date was February 28, 1936 at Carnegie Hall, New York, one of the greatest concert houses in the world. It was an ordinary day and several concerts were planned, namely the concert of Bronislav Huberman, a Polish violinist who played on the 1713 Stradivari. Now let me pause here for a moment and say that this guy is an absolute beast. I mean, look at this picture. Look at his hand position. It looks like he's from Chernobyl. He's playing a tripled octave, which are nearly impossible, and he's playing it with the hardest fingerings possible. With his second, third, and fourth, which can prove to you he has extreme flexibility and mobility in his fingers to play the hardest pieces ever known to mankind. Bronislav Huberman was born on December 19th, 1882 in Czestochowa, Poland. He started playing the violin at a very young age and he showed remarkable abilities on the instrument. His father recognized Bronislav's abilities and sought to provide him with the best musical education available. At the age of seven, he played his first public concert and it was so impressive that it led to further opportunities to later showcase his talent. Huberman went on to study at the Warsaw Conservatory under the guidance of renowned teachers. His Exceptional talent earned him scholarships and the support of influential patrons, which allowed him to pursue further studies abroad. Little did he know that later in his career, he would have his most prized possession stolen from him. Bronislav Huberman moved to the United States in the early 20th century. His tours in the US were part of his international career as a concert violinist. He first toured in the States in 1919, performing in numerous concerts and establishing his reputation among American audiences. In 1910, Huberman purchased his very own Stradivari made in 1713. This particular instrument was made during Stradivari's golden period, and it was already famous for its exceptional quality and rich sound. Huberman bought the Stradivarius from the Wurlitzer collection in Cincinnati, Ohio. The Wurlitzer family was known for dealing in rare and valuable musical instruments, and their collection included some of the most finest examples of stringed instruments. And needless to say, it became his favorite instrument. He often switched violins depending on the repertoire he would play, Kind of like how a chef would choose different knives depending on the dish he plans to make. If you're enjoying this crime video and you're new here, please consider subscribing. If we get to 777 likes, uh, I'll make more videos like this covering crazy stories uh, of different heists. Huberman headed towards Carnegie Hall from his apartment and walked the streets of New York in the afternoon. Upon entering into the well-lit hall, he headed towards the dressing room and removed his coat. He opened the cases of both his Stradivari and Guarneri violin so that they can warm up and come down to room temperature, and he headed on stage to warm up with the powerful entry of his concerto. The rehearsal with the orchestra was amazing, and everyone felt confident and excited for the performance. But no one would have been able to predict what would happen to Huberman's Stradivari only two days later. Carnegie Hall was filled with a roaring applause at the appearance of Huberman, who made his way on stage, shaking both the concertmaster and conductor's hand. He began his concert playing on his Strad and filled the hall with his powerful instruments. Everyone was in awe. After finishing the last note, he bowed and quickly headed off stage to swap his Strad with his Guarnerius. And as he left, the Strad was left unattended inside the unlocked dressing room. Do you think that was a big brain move? Hmm? Yes, and as you can predict, this was going to be the biggest mistake of his career. By the end of the concert, the violin vanished. Huberman proudly went to the dressing room and began to get ready to depart home after a successful night. But Huberman became pale at the sight of his missing violin and quickly alerted staff who contacted the NYPD. 
Now, this wasn't the first time someone had stolen his violin. In 1919, something similar happened where the thief was quickly found after the Strad disappeared and returned to Hubarman in a matter of hours. <laughs> so he remained hopeful that this time again, his violin would be returned in a matter of hours. However, as time, days, weeks went by, there were no clues. This was the most devastating event of his entire career. Let me tell you something. The violin wasn't found until 50 years later. And here's how this genius thief was able to keep one of the most precious violins in history hidden from the sight of the world. You won't believe how he did this. This is incredibly creative. Several days after the heist, the police considered a potential lead, a Julian Altman. He was wandering around the hallway close to Huberman's dressing room minutes before it disappeared. However, the NYPD were unable to find any sustainable evidence. That's because Altman was the thief, and he managed to cover his tracks perfectly. He managed to fool the whole world because he spent months planning this exact moment. Julian Altman was a man of detail, observant and methodical. He had a job at the Russian Bear, a restaurant next door to Carnegie Hall. He was a young freelance violinist who was very proficient in the art. As a result, he would often hang out backstage at Carnegie Hall when not working. He would spend most of his time practicing, but he also spent a lot of his time observing the layout, studying the pattern of the guards, and most diabolically, reading about the performers who would perform in the coming months. His victim was Huberman, and his beautiful strand caught his eye. Talk about the envy of man. And thus he began his mastermind preparation. His first step to avoid suspicion was to befriend the security guards and make them accustomed to his presence. He spent months practicing in the dressing rooms at Carnegie Hall and was particularly friendly to the security staff. He put on an elegant and gentlemanlike personality and the guards quickly became used to him and it would be safe to assume that they appreciated his presence. So on that February evening during Huberman's performance, the doorman at Carnegie Hall saw no issue in allowing Julian entry. With his punctuality, Julian won the trust of the staff, and his presence was pleasant. Because of this, he was granted permission to use the empty storage rooms and the dressing rooms to practice. Guy's got big brain, man. So he practiced for months, okay? just so that he can appear in this moment and look, oh, this little innocent Julian who came to practice again during Bronislav's concert. Oh, yeah, yeah, just let him in. Let him use uh, his practice rooms. That was his plan. Because if he didn't appear months back, the guards would have said, hey, who? hold on. No, you, you can't really come in here. But because the guards knew him, they said, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, come in, come in. That is so smart. Altman studied the patterns of the guard schedules as well as the cleaning staff, and he therefore knew that no one would be around when he would steal the violin. When Huberman was playing, he opened the door to the dressing room, saw the violin case, smuggled it into his jacket, and exited the building. <laughs> Man, in the days where cameras didn't exist, eh? It's worth noting that the concert hall was unusually humid that night, making Branislav hesitant to play on his Strad for the second half of the concert. He thus switched midway to his second best violin. And the crazy part is, no one noticed Julian entering into that dressing room. He was undetected. And guess what? He was such a familiar and friendly sight at Carnegie Hall that when it was discovered that the instrument had disappeared, he wasn't even questioned. You see, these people trusted him. Guys, don't trust people around you. They're gonna backstab you. Just like Julian here. The police didn't even interrogate him or searched his apartment. The very next day, it seems like Julian understood the kind of trouble he was going to be in if they found the violin on him, so he tried to pawn the violin to try and get some quick cash under the radar. But the broker was hesitant and thought that the violin was too risky and too recognizable to handle. So what do you think Julian did? Well, he kept the violin. Like any prison escape, staying out is harder than getting out. So Altman had to be creative after stealing the violin. So he did something outrageous. He concealed the violin by adding shoe polish on the varnish. And so it made it look darker and browner and all of the shine that was on the Stradivari vanished. Mm, it hurts to even say that. 
And so with its new appearance, it kind of looked like a cool antique, a cheap one. But in reality, hidden under that varnish was one of the greatest instruments in the world. Because of this cunning strategy, Altman played this violin in public without the fear of any suspicion being raised. <laughs> he would even bring it back and practice it into the same rooms of Carnegie Hall. Man, the audacity this man has. And he continued to perform with it for the rest of his career. Huberman's insurance company, Lloyd's of London, paid him $30,000 for the loss in 1936. Man, I don't think I would have balls of steel to do that. Would you be able to? Steal something and then go back to the same place where you stole it? The violin remained with Altman for the next 50 years. In 1985, Altman made a deathbed confession to his wife, Marcel Hall, revealing the true identity of the violin. Upon learning this, his wife turned the violin over to the Lloyds of London in 1987, where it was authenticated and restored by Charles Beer. I would have kept it. That, that's just me. The insurance company paid his wife a finder's fee of $263,000. Enough for a lifetime, I guess. So what happened after? Well, the violin went through a restoration process and was sold to a violinist by the name of Norbert Brainin. Uh, and then later in 2001, American violinist Joshua Bell um, bought the violin for slightly under $4 million. The violin's value today is estimated at $14 million. This story remains one of the greatest classical music heists in history. Make sure to subscribe and go practice so no one steals your violin.